We finished risk identification. Now we go to the next step of the process, which is risk evaluation in detail, qualitative risk evaluation. What are the principles of qualitative risk evaluation? We will build the probability and impact matrix and evaluate the different risks that we identified. Qualitative risk evaluation is an intermediate step between risk identification and quantification because we may have identified a very large number of risks. We have to get an idea how important are these risks. What is their relative importance? We don't have to know how much they will cost, but we want to know how important they are. The tool for this evaluation is the probability and impact matrix, also called the PIM. We bring all these elements in the probability and impact matrix and we will position the different risks, threats or opportunities in that matrix. It is very important when we look at these elements about risks that our data quality is acceptable. We have to verify our data and see how they are good or bad. After taking measures related to the risks, for example, reducing their impact or their probability by introducing risk responses, we should see that the position of those risks on the matrix, when we talk about threats, move to the lower left side of the matrix, while when we talk about threats, we want them to do, go to the high side, high impact and high probability. But we will look into that in the next slides. Let's now build the probability and impact matrix or the PIM. First, we have to know the probability. The probability is the expected occurrence of the risk in percentage. We can use a scale from 0 to 100, 0 to 1. It's not really important once we have a scale, but the most practical one is from 0 to 100. Now, a probability of 0 and a probability of 100, that's not an uncertainty anymore. Probability of 0, exactly 0, is a certainty that the risk will not occur. And when it's 100%, you are sure it will occur. The second parameter is the impact. How much does that risk event influences the project scope? quality, people, time, and budget. There is a table on the right-hand side, the impact and the score. I go here from 0 to 1, but we can do the same from 0 to 100. Impact, there is no impact. We give a score for 0, and we have an extreme impact. Then the score would be 1 or 100. We have to define what does it mean non, very low, low, medium, high, very high, and extreme. Extreme would be that the company would go bankrupt. Medium could be that we lose $50,000. It depends on the project. You have to find a way how to link those descriptions to a scale. Let's start now to evaluate the risks. We identify the probability, we identify the impact, and now we have the PIM, the probability and impact matrix. Here we have it for threats. On the bottom part, the yellow part, we see a zone, all the threats which are positioned in the yellow zone, we will just accept. They have too low impact and too low probability 
to invest in a risk response. The red zone, however, is the zone where we have high important threats that require action. These threats, we will move to the next step, to the risk quantification, and we will identify measures to reduce their impact or probability. In the middle, there is the zone to watch triggers. Here we have threats which are a little bit between the two. We have to identify those and when we are executing the project, we have to see what happens to them. Are they moving to the top right or are they moving to the left down? This is an important work to do during the project because during certain phases of the project, certain risks may become more important. When we have a risk response, for example, for the risks that are in the top right red zone, the dots that would be there, they should move down to the left. It means that our risk management plan has effect. We can have a look at the same thing for the opportunities. The scales are the same. Now in the bottom right, we have the zone to accept. Here are the opportunities. If they happen, we will accept them. It's great. We will not invest any money in those risks or opportunities. We just see what happens. The dark green zone is also the high level area. These are the opportunities which make a good chance to become real. So here we try to push the opportunities to the top left side. They have to go to the corner to 100, 100. We will see later what risk responses we can use. The same thing here, a zone to watch triggers. We will see where they go. When they come closer to the dark green zone, we may consider them to be interesting enough to implement some measures. The PIM, very important element, we have to work with this. Once we have the risks qualified, we can go to the next step, risk quantification. Here we will have some calculations, so get your pens, your paper and your calculator ready. See you in the next session.